we are grieved, we are in pain here, but we are struggling to make sure we serve mankind. And so you permit us to continue with the program with other topics. So at this time, we'll be talking on the Anglophone crisis, the global condemnation that we have had from international bodies, from other countries, from individuals, given the mass killings in the Southwest and the Northwest regions as far as the Anglophone uh, crisis is concerned. After the brutal murder of uh, the lady in Moyuka, there was a kind of mass arrest in that environment and of which some people have claimed that they did the killing. And this time, not too long from that event, about 24 hours later, we discovered that another man was brutally killed in the Northwest region, where he was chopped up with cutlass and so on. Some other people were shot, and today we got that the uh, men of the underworld, the Amber guys, were in the Limbe route, between Motengene and Limbe route, where there was a kind of uh, a traffic because yeah. they, they had blocked the route. And so all these things, these condemnations are coming by what is being done. Okay, this time I want to begin with you, Dr. Busi. If you look at it, the human rights and so on, individuals, the governments all over the world are coming to condemn all this killing, but no action yet. Oh, Mr. Mojeto, a lot of human rights uh, organizations, big, very big NGOs, international organizations, right groups have condemned what is going on in the Northwest and Southwest uh, since uh, 2017 where many families have lost their lives, many, many people have lost their lives, and many families have been displaced, and uh, many people are refugees, and we could see a delegation that went to Nigeria for, to see the refugees in Nigeria, where many administrators, especially deals and uh, deals and uh, mayors have left their areas of command in the Northwest and Southwest, especially in the suburbs. We have seen a lot of diplomats who have come to Cameroon to decry the fact that uh, the Anglophone crisis could only be solved through the dialogue table. And we saw the government organizing a major national dialogue that was good but was not inclusive. Mr. Mambo Williams, I want to say that a lot of people have died more than, when you look at statistics, since the crisis started, about more than 1,000 persons have died in the northwest and southwest. More than that was a more than 1,000. So that is a that is more than a community that have died during this crisis, and people are still in pain. People are in post-traumatic pain, and we could see Tubunagi who even said that reconstruction could not take place without peace and justice. We could see many right groups that have come to Cameroon, many diplomats, the French uh, ambassador have been there. We have seen leaders of all magnitude, even the U U.S. Security Council, they have talked on the issue. The United Nations have talked of the issue of the Anglophone, even the U.S. Security Council, to see that many, pe many right people have died. Even people, right groups, members of right groups have died on their way to, to, to do humanitarian services. They have died. We have seen where, where nurses have died while, while taking care of either the separatists or the military. We have seen cases where many teachers' hands have been chopped off, teachers have been killed, ransom have been taken from teachers. We have seen places where, like in Kwakwa and other villages, where villages have been set ablaze. To tell you that the Anglophone crisis is deplorable, it's really bad. It's, for me, it's not even a crisis. Again, it's like getting to a wall. I can say it's a wall because it's not more a crisis because a crisis can be managed. And now, if body parts of people are being, uh, being terminated, people are being killed grossly to tell you that it's not more a crisis, it's a wall. And we have to decry, we have to fight against such inhuman practices that are going. We could see in Bamenda where a head of somebody was being chopped, up, chopped off with an axe. That's terrible. That is inhumanity. So that's insanity. Those are things that are not good. We are not blaspheming anyone here. It's not good against the eyes of humanity. So to tell you that government needs to sit up is a two-way sided issue. The Anglophone crisis has been long. The separatist leaders are still in prison. They, 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 we have social media 
leaders abroad like Saku Ikume. There are many of them who claim that they are uh, Anglophone leaders, Amazonian leaders abroad, and they are the ones fueling the crisis here in Ground Zero where people are dying. But they are living in safe, safe places abroad and their children are going to school. And you are not seeing them even talking of the way ahead. They are even divided. You people are fighting for a crisis and you have more than five social media leaders. You have different, you have coalitions and you, have, you don't have a way ahead. And people in Ground Zero are dying and suffering with COVID-19 again. The people are suffering. And you are claiming that you are leaders abroad, that you are fighting for, a, for, for, for independence. And you are fighting for independence. All of you, you do not have a single roadmap. Why people are dying? You have financial squabble among you. You have division among you. You have different armed groups stationed everywhere. I don't know. This is not the way forward to solve the Anglophone crisis, Mr. Montetto. Because when the elephants are fighting, it is the grass that suffers. So what we are saying is that for us to solve the Anglophone crisis, we could see how Mr. Is, uh, I will not call him His Excellency again because my friend here might just cry. As a, <laughs> but he can call campus Excellency. I, I could see how uh, Mr. Nijon Fundi went abroad to discuss about these separatist leaders, how they are divided, how they are fighting among them, how they are terrorizing people, which is good. But they undermine uh, Mr. Nijon Fundi to say that people like Nid, Mr. Nim John Fundi might have had his flaws, but those are people who fought for democracy and was telling them that what are the, what are the legacies that they will keep as uh, social media leaders. So what I'm trying to say, I'm not blaming one-sided. I'm blaming to the government. The government has a lot to play. The government has been struggling, but the government has not played its part a lot. The government started with the major national dialogue, and I feel, I feel that the dialogue was not genuine because it was not inclusive. And even some of the recommendations that were taken in the dialogue has not operationalized. There's no, oh, there's no methodology to say that it's pragmatic, to say that they, are, they can implement because it's saw the special status. And the Anglophone, the common Anglophone man in the street doesn't know what is a special status because there's no package. Even the intelligentsia don't know what is a special status. Nobody knows what is in the package. So we are saying that government started some negotiation with these leaders. But after some time, we could hurt of division. We heard nothing about the negotiation. So what we are saying is that we are thinking that the government, because we should be looking for solutions too. We here as panelists, as politicians, as political analysts, I think that we can be given our solutions because we can we can talk about the cost, the cost, the cost. We'll never solve the problems. Let's look for possible solutions on how this agrophone crisis can be tackled. And I feel that I have a lot of solutions here to give to our government to see that this problem can be solved. And in, Maybe we'll come to okay, those okay. solutions. Let me okay. come to Mr. Njomo Siri. If you look at it, if you look at these recent events of the lady who was killed in, in Makanga in the Moyuka subdivision and the man who was discovered also being brutalized and killed shot at close range by the military. You know, there's a kind of, uh, you know, people are giving different opinions that that of the lady, there was a lot of condemnation. People came on social media, governments came and meetings were held. But when this one <coughs> who killed the man, nothing has been said to today. Mambo, uh, that, that might not really be a very good debate for us, because death is death. Mm -hmm. And uh, since nobody can, no, no human being can create another human being, you are not supposed to take the life of another human being. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, uh, the manner in which somebody dies sometimes does not really matter to be saying that uh, we needed to uh, denounce the Bamenda scenario uh, either uh, equal to the way we denounce uh, the Muyuka incident or vice versa also. No, those are trivialities that uh, might not really help us dissect into the cancer that is gradually eating uh, followers of this other gospel of our time. Permit me talk about 
the intention that perpetrators of this violence act want to create. They want to create fear. They want to use psychological trauma to manipulate other people's action. Uh, and at the same time, the government also wants to seize the opportunity to legitimate his own acts. And that is why, as a political pundit, I am very selective in my position as far as uh, these utterances are concerned. Not to say that I am um, apolo making apology for uh, extreme barbarism and violence to support the independent fighters, but to say that there is no way we can dissociate these killings from political uh, 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 setups. Okay. It is a political so situation that has orchestrated, as uh, my learned panelist earlier said about, there is no smoke without fire. If we only focus on the smoke, whatever the color of the smoke, without uh, or minimizing the cause of that smoke, we might be uh, following the shadow and not the subject. Uh, the minister, there was a minister of culture in this country, Abu Machen, in the early hours of this crisis, he constituted the panel, uh, the, the team with um, a former minister, Garga Ama. Now I said to Bamenda, when uh, most of the ministers uh, closer to the regime failed in their pre uh, preliminary uh, consultation, they sent them as independent because somebody like Gagarama and this uh, minister Abomachem, they are people that have been known for their aura. And so on an interview, he granted Equinox, he told the uh, journalist that Mr. Bia, Dorothy Njoma, and, another, and some few people constituted a team that Aijo at the time sent to the Northwest and the Southwest for a peace talk, because what most people, especially the young generation that are writing, I don't know whether they are putting history, should know that the Anglophone crisis is not starting in 2016. Uh -huh. yes. And so, Mr. Bia was the head of that committee, what the French one would call the rapporteur. And so he was the one who compiled the minutes and presented it to uh, the then President of the Republic, Amado Ayuchi. And so, Abu Machen was therefore convening the head of state to simply go in that cupboard, remove the same draft report, and start implementing it. That, as simple as that. So that the Anglophone community, which in this case I want to emphasize and underline, the minority are supposed to be brought to their rights. So, that uh, historical part was necessary to show the bad faith of the Yaoundé administration headed by Mr. Biafor, who do not want to give a genuine uh, solution to the Anglophone crisis. We cannot talk about this violence because the question, the real question we are asking ourselves here is, can we tolerate violence in the modern age? If the answer is no, what is the uh, sanction that should be attributed to perpetrators of this act? Are they ignorant or they are instigated? Now, we are not talking about people who, were, who have left in a particular community that was kept undeveloped. We are talking about Cameroonian that we have been living together. So if we are talking of 60 years of post-independence, it means that we have been civilized together. Not a secret. Some even left the, the urban center to migrate to those hinterland where they are now uh, leading this, this, uh, arm, uh, these independent armed groups. So they are learned people. They are people who can speak English and French. They are people who can express themselves. It means that they are not ignorant. They are being instigated. They are instigated by who? Before I really land on that uh, issue of being instigated, Dr. Oredi helped us uh, 
highlight some of them self-proclaimed leaders on social media that want to to seize the advantage of digitalization to blackmail to fall to 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 to, to forcefully force themselves as representative of the anglophone i just want to answer to them with a shot yeah. that truly when they will come to know who is a leader of the anglophone a plebiscy will be run in the anglophone community and the people will suscitate will resurrect their own leaders so all of them that they have been naming their name on on newspaper they should rest their case for now because truly we know how to get our leaders but i wanted to learn with the major national dialogue it was a love for the anglophone community I will never, I will, I will never cease to say that all those who participated to that, including somebody who that they nearly call here Excellency on the platform, actually are betrayed to the Anglophone community. I am not very sure of the amount that were given to them to shun the amount, but all I know is that for the majority, since they left the major national dialogue, they have not more been prolific in their writing and their vocal when they come on media and the question i got up today with because i always think about i go to bed with this issue and i get up with i was asking myself what actually happened to their voice when they enter the major national dialogue and come mm -hmm. out then i was reading one newspaper at the time and i was being brief i don't know it's still an allegation that 50 million francs were cut just for their allowance i do not know whether this statement is very true but i know that the budget estimated for that major national dialogue was around nine billion mm -hmm. and if that kind of money was to be put together then it means that the pocket allowance of individuals especially for those who matter now without saying without minimizing mm -hmm. because i don't want to rubbish completely the participation of the anglophone i just want to ask for a case that concerns the anglophone out of the 400 participants that were convened for that meeting, including their friends in the diaspora who came with their girlfriend and they were sleeping in the Luxurian Hotel, how many Anglophones were represented? Mambo, it's been reported to me from the statistics I drawn from Le Messager, less than 20% of the whole show were represented by Anglophones. Yes! But they went for that and, and, I think statistics and, and read my role. The, the they, anglophone headed most of the... the oh, that is where, that is where the game was the balanced. Department. That is where they, they went and play now the gymnastic. They put the anglophone, but anglophone that are pro-government. To head the committee. But the committee itself constituted the majority of francophones than anglophone. Surprisingly, that is what happened. Uh, so I, well, when I started the debate somewhere, somebody told me that no, uh, the community of Anglophone in Cameroon are very small and so it is, uh, it is understandable that but, even but, in, if in the total population of Cameroon you have 20, uh, uh, approximately 20% 20, 20 Anglophone and 80% Francophone. Yeah. But the question I want to ask you for an issue that concerns the Anglophone, I have a last point before I land, for an issue that concerns the Anglophone, was it normal? that only about 20% of the Anglophones should be represented. Now you are telling okay. me that they were the one leading the committee. Yes, out of the eight committee, they headed more than five. But the truth about it is, again, is that all those committees already had their report pre-prepared. Okay. That is what Chief Dr. John Gute, the current Prime Minister of Cameroon, that heard from the Anglophone region, notably the Southwest, was not able to order anything. And that is where you have somebody like Akere Muna who goes in and see that people are smoke, are, 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 are deficitating and are inheriting their mess. That what is happening in there is that people are reading a content that they are not satisfied with, but they want to be part of it. It was the case, for example, yeah. Bishop uh, Emeritus. Archbishop Emeritus of Douala, Cardinal Tumi, I mean, Cardinal Tumi, before the major national dialogue, his major music was what? Federation, Federation, Federation. But he went in Yaoundé. They convinced him to go to the Northwest to preach peace on decentralization. <laughs> Will you really okay. tell me that that man was not pleased during that meeting? Mom, I wanted okay. to learn about the, the narrative yes. that went. Just a strong throw. Tonengi is not too far from the uh, Yaoundé uh, conference center. They never were lavishing at the prison, <coughs> in Kanto at the time. 
Pont de Yer also is not far. It would is not far from the 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 the. Okay. Yeah, the <laughs> These two major actors were not part of the of the major national okay. government. So, where why did they use our phone money to lure the anglophone Maybe community? Maybe we shall become These are the results that, that are surfacing today. <laughs> okay, uh, let me come to Doctor Busey while you take your breath. If you look at it, we are talking on this anglophone crisis where there are so many condemnations. But if you look at the social media and other mainstream media, you've seen that uh, the ex-combatants have come up to start condemning their colleagues. And uh, some have even called that they should go in front of the US embassy for a demonstration and, and, and so on. The US, the US is part of uh, some of the country or those who have condemned these killings. Now, do you think that they go into the uh, U.S. embassy to demonstrate where they have made so many journalists to go to Yaoundé. Do you think it will make the U.S. to comment at this time? Mr. Uh, to take some actions? Mr. Mombo Williams, uh, uh, issues of war psychology is very complex. Okay. And issues of war psychology goes with the mind. And that's why you see these separatist leaders, uh, they have so many groups. And the, uh, the issue of everybody wants to be seen as powerful as a frontliner because they are fighting the problem of seeing themselves as frontliners. And seeing themselves as frontliners where you don't accept the ideology of B, you become enemies, yeah. become a black leg. And that's what we've seen on social media. They are fighting themselves a lot. They are, they are, you see frontliners and they have their social media writers. As it, at times you see their social media writers calling people's names just to paint them red. This one wants to paint black. This one wants to paint red. So we see the division, there's a lot of division among them. I don't know. I don't know whether they have a vision on what they are doing or they just psychologically uh, want to show their power because there's a lot of dissonance among them. They have a psychic problem and among them, superiority com complex, inferiority complex. Uh, I want to hear, I want, I want to be popular. They have a lot of, they, they have this, this issue of psycho popularity that they want to show on the social media that because of Many people reply or many people put, uh, accept what you are saying. That means you are the frontliner of the anglophone crisis and so on. So I think that most of those things are selfish. Most of those things are egoistic. And most of those things are just, they are just thinking about their psychosocial needs at the moment. They are not thinking about the future. It talks of some solutions too. So uh, that's the first thing I want to say because uh, they started well, but now most of them are already having selfish ambition and yeah. fighting among power and you cannot solve the problem. And that's why in ground zero it's difficult for the fighters to even hear from what they're saying. So I think that uh, Mr. Mojito, they have to be very cautious and they have to be prudent. They will need to change their strategy. And if they want the United Nations to understand their plight, their, their fight is real, it's genuine. But I think that you cannot be fighting over power. You are killing the same people you, you are fighting for. You cannot be fighting for independence. You are victimizing the same people. You, you victimize them. How do you lead people when you victimize them? How do you lead people when you, 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 you inhumanize, inhumanize, how can I put it? In, inhumanize them. You inhumanize people in the, in the form of killing them in a very, very inhuman ways. You see machets, using axes, terrorizing people in the village. This, and there's no respect for elders. Even our parents in the villages have seen situations where you see young youngsters now because of the crisis. They have taken arms. They, 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 they intimidate our uh, parents, our parents and grandparents in the villages. That is that is not the anglophone culture. Not distant amount to the yeah, fact that, that is, uh, drugs. That is not the uh, whether drugs or not. That is not the anglophone culture that we we inherited, and that's not the values we should keep. So if you are fighting for a cause, you must respect your parents. You must respect your brothers and siblings. You must take every you respect human life. So I feel that if they, have, they they change their strategies not to humanize people, they change their strategy. They have they look ahead. They look at issues. They fight against because they have an issue of leadership. 
Good. And if they have different leaders, they can who want to be the president. Everyone wants a come want to be president. This one, Mark Barita is there. This one, Tato. And then at times they say, I'm the one who killed this person in this place. I'm the one who have killed, sent people to kill it. It is not, it's painting yourself black instead. Doctor, you the, said something. Uh, yeah. Just as uh, President Ni John Frundi said, that the way they are divided, if they don't come together, and it happens that they take over leadership, he's going to exile himself and never to come back to this country because he doesn't see them serious. What's um, the fear factor is there, as uh, Mr. Njumo Siri earlier said here, that uh, because trust building is very important. There's a question, there's a question I wanted to ask. Uh, you see, as we are talking, this country also, people must be very serious. There's a question that I was taken to, I wanted to ask in Mandela's Washington Fellows in Yaoundé, where there was a CRTV journalist there. And when I, I wanted to ask on issue of this trust building and fear as we are talking like this, but I was not permit, I put up my hand until the journalist uh, never accepted me to talk. So those are the kind of things that issues of leadership comes with trust. And I want to say that as for now, Mr. Modretto, I will not lie. If you put all the separatist leaders, me, I trust none of them because of their ideologies. Uh, the little trust I had for their, for their struggle was with the Naira 10. And if they disrespect the Naira 10, like people like Sisiko who started the struggle diplomatically, and you observe that when Sisiko even started the, the struggle dip diplomatically, his own was not too bloodshed. But you see other people who have come, they have fight, they are power mongers. And they claim you see a lot of money laundry among them even. Yeah. You have seen they have taken money. Okay, last time they, when the car of Dr. Fontaine was burned sometime, uh, money was raised to buy his car. Mr. Moderator, did you see that car? Did a you very, see a very good uh, Did you see the car here in Boya? It's a car I only saw when it, uh, the incident happened. You saw the car that was bought? You saw a newly, flashy, you saw a flashy, flashy car here in Moya <laughs> that was bought. So I want to say that uh, there's, there's a lot of mismanagement and no, no trust and fear. Everybody's nervous among them because of their style. Because leadership goes with leadership styles. As a leader, you must have some uh, some personality traits that makes people admire you. And all of them, we don't even know who they are. Social media leaders with so much power as they claim to have. But I think that they should be also, I'm talking of the solution now, yes. they should be part of solving the Anglophone crisis because no matter what, we cannot solve the Anglophone crisis without the social media out there too. We cannot neglect them too. They are very, very important too in the solution making process. So what I'm saying is that everybody is now important for us to solve the Anglophone crisis. And we don't want this crisis to take to take long again because if it continues in this inhumanized nature, in this gruesome, gruesome nature, in this cruel nature, we we'll find out that it can take about a decade, and we are not praying for that because our generation is already suffering, the younger generation is suffering as they are not going to school. So what I'm advising uh, the, the government of the republic is that uh, we all love Cameroon, and we are first of all live in peace in Cameroon. And when you look at uh, our motto, the motto of Cameroon talks of peace, work, fatherland. And the motto is something that must be respected. And nobody's ad, ad, above the law. And the President of the Republic's Excellency, President Povia, is the guarantor of peace. And I feel that he should respect the motto of the fatherland, peace, work, fatherland, so that uh, we can bring peace in Cameroon. And the only way to bring peace is that we must have good faith. We must have the political way to bring, faith, uh, to bring peace. And one issue I've seen within the government is that everybody wants to also show security complex. You see, the, you see a genuine case where the prime minister and the head of government have been sent to preach to talk about peace talk. You see a minister will get up, and, a minister will get up and, say, and, and he's talking on another TV station in France that is, and say his own thing. So disrespecting the prime minister, we have seen situations where ministers in this country claim that they are more than the prime minister, and they are the more than Yaoundé, more than, they, are, they, are more, they are more Yaoundé than the prime minister. <laughs> the Yaoundé, Yaoundé so no. We have seen situations where many ministers in this country believe that they come from a particular region, the ethnic group with the president, 
solutions of the Anglophone crisis can only come from them. So we want the President of the Republic to put his stamina as the head of state and call for negotiation, call for a, an inclusive dialogue. And in that dialogue, there should be some clauses. There should be some memorandum of understanding. And in this memorandum of understanding, it should be that separatist leaders are brought, social media separatist leaders are brought, like the Ecomel and rest, the Barita and the rest. They will come to Cameroon. They will not be arrested. It should be a clause signed. And then that there will be a third party for this. If we don't want, there might be a third party too. And, they, and I feel that if there is all, we are all genuine, the negotiation or whatever the dialogue should take place out of Cameroon, and in the process of discussing, the, the Naira 10 in prison also, they should, they should remove them from the dungeon, and they, stay, they can stay somewhere for a month where it's more comfortable because I feel that their mind is not the best in the dungeon. After their mind must have recovered over time and space, they can be part of the dialogue table, and then the government, civil society leaders, uh, people from the grassroots, everyone should be involved in the dialogue process. Even the common man, even the buy riders, they should have a representative, the taxi drivers, the businessmen, everyone out of the country. We sit like a people. And that's when we solve this problem to be sustainable. Because at that, at that juncture, even. You might be thinking that separation, the Anglophone might be think, the separatist leaders might be thinking that separation is the only solution. Don't be, don't, don't be scared. You might, as a government, convince them. At the end of the day, you see yourself, find yourself in a, a unitary country with federation. So everything should be, first of all, genuine. Okay. So everything should be genuine. Whether you like it or not, the mentality of separation is always in their mind. You can only talk that through an open, honest dialogue. Okay, um, Sancho Mausiri, we are concluding on this uh, topic, so that we'll take the last topic briefly. Uh, all these condemnations, condemnation is started years back, and it should be more than four years that they have been condemning this art and condemning this art. It is, is it not high time, which are conclusion, is it not high time Cameroonians to say, okay, uh, all this flattery from maybe some individuals of self-ego, from maybe some international organization who want some self-benefits uh, from Cameroon, we forget about them and come as a Cameroonian family to solve this problem. Uh, it, will, it might be a bit challenging for me to attack international organizations like the Human Rights Watch that rightly came out and condemned the action of the uh, non-state uh, uh, actors. To know that some time ago, especially with the Ngarabo situation, uh, it was being alleged that there were the separatists providing them with, uh, with information, inside okay. information. And uh, the lady, the then lady Alexandro, that was spotted to be in, that <coughs> whenever she's in Cameroon, she, she easily penetrates environments that are, are known to be very brutal mm -hmm. uh, and dangerous. And that when she goes there, she has the possibility to mix with these guys and they yeah. give her in-depth information about the military. Uh, uh, and so it, it becomes paradoxical now when uh, the violence comes from that side now uh, against the unarmed civilian. So it, 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 it beats one imagination to actually ask oneself that... Uh, what, are, what is really happening? Who are they fighting? But we must see the recent uh, slaughtering and killing as a form of expression. People want to express themselves. In a very bad way. In a very bad way. Very bad People way. want to express themselves, at least in two uh, graphical or I, I, I for graphic Wait, you know I'm a designer, so I want to paint the pictures so that those who are at home should understand. First, they target women. Women are sensitive, givers of life, and anything that touches a woman, it paints. It paints. Yeah. So, coming now to give them as public sacrifice, 
because the way they slaughter them as a guinea pig, <laughs> you start questioning yourself truly, what is the intention of this act? And as I told you, they want to convey a message. First, first, now, you, you know, when I talk of message now, you can look the message in terms of form and content. The poor of it is, is, is what you can call the form. But is the content really poor? I don't know. The perpetrator are well placed. But what I wanted to explain, yeah, uh, Jumo, and, and we are talking about taking off life. We are talking about taking off life. I'm seeing something I want to talk about. If you permit me, let me, let me focus on that yeah. thing. So, their, their message is addressed to two persons. First, to so their brother that are being that according to them are blacklist because for example the case of uh, Tam Tamasan for example they say you are going and giving them jumba mm -hmm. you are giving them blow uh, sorry to those who are following no, blow is so you are sharing with them yeah, uh -huh. and so in the process <laughs> of sharing you can still give our our height our secrets that was their problem with her and it goes by extension because you you must see the situation a bit in front, those who have dropped down their arms and have gone to the uh, DDR centers, they are also look like betrayers. And if you follow Cameroon calling this Sunday that just passed, the Bamenda DDR detainees came out, about five of them, gave a rundown on how they are feeding facts yeah. and that they are ten times better than when they were yeah. in the height. We shall be coming to yes. that here. So they, 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 they gave a lot of things that, for political pundits like some of us, we think that they have put what in their mouth to have that kind of fanfare talk. But again, when you see the reaction that their former colleagues that are seeing the heights mm -hmm. and might not be having the same supposedly uh, nice condition like them, and they are wondering about their future, uh, what they should react if they meet meet slowly their wife, the wife of those who, who uh, have maybe yeah. gone to the center or a relative, what should be their reaction? I have painted there two pictures that anybody in the house should be able to dilute and understand. But now, you are asking about these international communities, whether truly they are genuine in their move, they don't have hidden agenda. Uh, do, the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2235 that came out from the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Guterres one month ago pleaded on terrorism group and every war community in the world that they should quench arm because of the COVID-19 imposed challenges. It should let you know that what is happening to Cameroon is not, is not, uh, is, is the, 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 the view. War is being, uh, it's an enterprise. War is an enterprise. And the strategy of war needs to be drawn by both parties. But we are coming at a time where we are discovering that the separatists do not have a war strategy. They don't have a roadmap that they are following. And so the division might be interpreted by the international community as a lost battle. And that is why you can see human rights, for example, take a position and, and, and totally blame condemn them. and condemn them. Because truly, if you have a strategy, you will not take from, you, you will not be using your own son, because the, let me just kind of control it like that. You cannot sacrifice your own son to prove to the neighbor that truly you are angry <laughs> eh? that, that to, uh, to show the degree of angerness it is your son you will no more have that son yeah i saw the four children of uh, late uh, uh tamason holding a plant where well, he was caricature again holding a, a, a signboard <laughs> that you kill our mother how shall we be raised how will, how will we be raised up when you have Conscient talk, and for those, my quarter boy in, in Munya, my 16 and other, uh, Bokwango or B Bonduma, when you have conscience talk like that, those things can even radicalize those who were internally accepting your movement. And that is what, again, the international community is, is, is beating his heart on them. That how can we be fighting a government in front of you, you since the crisis started? We always report in your favor. Hardly we even know where some of your leaders are here. 
We can even block their accounts. But if we have allowed all those things, because we believe in your struggle. But how come that you can be sacrificing your own and you are touching the gender? You know, gender is a is a conspiracy over the world. We shall come back to talk about the gender, the the, the gender agenda as far as the Africa 2063 agenda is concerned, and even the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So these are these are agenda that the United yeah. Nations does Gen not join with. Gender equality. Okay, does yeah. not join with. And to see violence, that separatists just take in their arm and that to be, and when you want Gender to see the perpetrator, 19 years old, 29. Now, I will not talk with that certainly on the few individuals that were spotted on media that uh, were the were the perpetrator. Truly, the government of Mr. Bia have not proven good fit. It means that anything that happened and they carry images and come and show on the media, personally, I don't believe. If they want to force me to be, let them start by bringing the cops of Samuel Wazizi that was part of the first, that was our discussion with the first part of this. At least, we have been asking them that they should bring evidence, even in court, when you hear of heavier cop, uh, cop, they should prove the existence of that particular thing that is under detention. Okay. He has not been brought forward. When they come home, they, they, we, we, we put... 226 <laughs> at the time when, we're, when our political uh, 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 friends were under detention at the maximum security, it took three weeks, but none of them were, were, were answered. So, government want to uh, uh, sniff into this scenario to look, to look good, to uh, paint their face and look like women who put foundation, but personally, I'm already... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, a, I'm a one I'm a one citizen. I don't I don't care about their community and whatever <laughs> things that, that they, they produce because I know that yeah. they have a genuine solution. They know the way about this so this crisis okay. and it is not their their figurative uh, uh, apologies to the family, condolence messages that truly shows that they are committed to bring peace in the land. Okay. Except there's any other last word. Uh, then, uh, yes, my my last word is that. Uh, we cannot live in chaos. That is the truth. I don't know. Our government, our ministers, our directors, our president, our members of government, our members of parliament, our senators, our top businessmen, our judiciary, our magistrates. I think that it's time everybody work with a conscience because most of the uh, men of men in government. They are not living in these grassroots areas where the anglophone crisis is really hot. I have seen situations when, when they are going there, they go there with their ammo cars. They go there with their ammo cars to tell that the anglophone crisis is, is very d difficult. And I feel that uh, positive, genuine report should be given to President Paul Beer. Okay. And I feel that it is high time the crisis was solved. Because if they don't solve this crisis now, they are blocking a better future for the leaders of tomorrow. Because most of them have dropped out from school and the Anglophones even, even have been franconized and assimilated in the Francophone system of education and their cultures and their values. So solve us the crisis to keep our Anglophone hegemony. If we can live in diversity, in unity, but I feel that we can only live in diversity and unity where we sit in a genuine round table and talk on the form of government because federation will never be a taboo again in this country, whether we like it or not. Okay, Xavier, you are without waste of time because we have less than a quarter minute. So we shall be taking the last topic to maybe... Uh...